Welcome to everyone and good morning. I'm so glad that many of us uh, came together this morning and uh, you are all interested in this webinar and ready to learn from our great speakers today. My name is Silvi Kolasar and um, I have been working in the educational sector for six years now in Hungary and I always felt close to Finland and the modern educational model. During my work, one of my goals has been to implement as many good practices as possible to school's life and have a happier and satisfied teacher and students uh, nationwide. I also think that computer science is uh, really crucial uh, in these days uh, in terms of preparing the younger generation to the future. Finland and Estonia are ahead in all education related topics. so. I'm looking forward to this webinar with all of you. This event is a collaboration between Finnagora and the Estonian Institute in Hungary. The webinar takes place in partnership with uh, Education Nation, a brand for global marketing and export of Estonian education. Those of you listening in, you will be familiar with success stories in education in both Finland and Estonia. So to kick this off, let's start with a short clip from a speech by a director of the Finnish Institute in Budapest called Finnagora. Uh, so please welcome Kita Hunga Balumiken. Kero. Welcome to the first webinar in the field of education organized by Finnagora in cooperation with the Estonian Institute. We are very happy to be here together and hope that you will enjoy this following hour with us. I send these greetings from Finland, where education is always topical. I would say especially in these times, in these heavy times with the coronavirus, but at the same time I want to inform you that we are not in this webinar going to talk about the challenges in the coronavirus times. However, we, or actually the experts, are going to present two different visions for the future of the primary school. Two visions that are uh, from different countries, one Finnish and one Estonian. We all know that good education is so important for the well-being of people and for the wealth of societies. I would say that the heroes of today are the teachers. I say this because I really think so and at the same time I think that teachers don't get enough praise and don't get enough thank for the tough work that they are doing. Teachers live in an ongoing social change and they, the demands of, on the teachers are all the times harder and harder. With these words, I want to wish you a very nice hour and I hope that our ideas and our visions from the North will inspire you. And then I will hand over to my colleague from the Estonian Institute, Director Kret Palias, and after her, the moderator Silvi Kolesar will take over. Thank you, Kita. I would like to welcome Kret Palias, the director of the Estonian Institute in Hungary. Hello, good morning, everyone. I'm uh, so uh, happy that so many of you have uh, joined us here this morning, and I would like to extend my uh, my uh, big gratitude to our uh, panelists and moderator and my colleagues uh, from uh, Finagora to have uh, made this uh, webinar uh, on education uh, possible. Uh, I hope that everybody finds the program today inspiring and that you will also join us in the future on similar events. Thank you very much and I will hand over to Sylvie. Thank you. Claire. So this morning we will dive into interesting approaches and we will hear inspiring stories and best practices. I'm delighted to have tracked down Ilona Tamiela, who is an educational consultant of the city of Helsinki, consulting 
more than 100 schools and 300 daycares, as well as vocational schools. Uh, she is an educational consultant for municipalities, educational organizations and businesses, both in Finland and uh, internationally. She coordinated the benchmarking of innovations in schools and uh, he, she has been the coordinator of the Helsinki Education Week, facilitator of educational transformation and has written many books and uh, articles. So her background is uh, absolutely amazing. So welcome Ilona and it's really great to have you here with us. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm um, delighted to be here. Um, you said that I work at the city of Helsinki. I don't work with them anymore for about almost a year, but, uh, um, but I, I, I did <laughs> work for them as a consultant. Now I'm, like you said, also more broader, um, assisting transformation in, in many other uh, countries also, and, and not only here in Finland yeah. anymore. But I, I do work in, in, in Finland still, but, <laughs> but in, uh, in different positions. So if I, if I share my screen with you, um, and I will start my, my talk. Yeah, you can see it. So um, even though, um, our our director just said that we we won't touch the covid but i will still touch it maybe a little bit a little bit here and um in a way that what is the phenomenon based learning that finland is is doing and um and also um how in a way that it, it's it's more important even after 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 the covid um took place for us to understand that what is this kind of um, phenomenon based learning that what Finland started in 2015 and, um, and 16. So we need to think about maybe the, you know, the, about the role of the school and, and, and the role of teaching and what is the role of learning. And um, the school system, if we think about it, the way it's being structured at the moment, still in, in many parts of the world, it was invented in the industrial age and we have the norms for standardization and, and, and compliance. But um, now more and more, we need to think about that, how the information is really everywhere. Also, not only for us, we are learning at the moment through, through a Zoom webinar, new ideas and new visions, practices and so forth. But this similar is also for our students. So the students can learn online also take um, Zoom um, contact, for example, across the world and, um, and share their information from um, around. And that also the change is constant. We can't think that, you know, that things are not changing. It, it has been constant and it will be constant, actually maybe even in a, in a quicker pace. And, and we, in a way, we also face existential challenges. And these are all, if we think about the information everywhere, the change and, and the challenges that we face, they are all transdisciplinary phenomena that can be also or should be also um, thought and um, thought about in, in school. So, for example, the pandemic that is happening or, or the inequality and poverty, climate change, the six months extin extinction, loss of natural resources and, and so forth. And, and when we think about the phenomenon based learning, it's really a transdisciplinary effort and um, where the many teachers who, who are in these silos often in these disciplinary silos need to start working more and more together. So it's not only multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary, but transdisciplinary and taking it to the higher, higher level. Um, it does kind of um, rely on a constructivist theory and we need to see the learner as an active being and and, and how the learning itself is is also in um, relationship with other people and um, not only coming from um, top down 
from the teacher and where the, the learner is a kind of a silent and, and, and just absorbing. But there needs to be action. And, um, and so it's holistic, transdisciplinary, like I said, but authentic also in, um, for example, in materials that we use or, or authentic in, in the information sources and, 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 uh, and also in the, and contextual to the, to the, what is happening in the world, to the phenomenon and, and so forth. And this is why the, the phenomenon-based learning also includes these kind of research-oriented and um, inquiry-based um, um, the, the methodologies for, for learning. And um, the actual also is, is kind of contextual, so it's, it's to the actual world. And then we need to engage more of this formative assessment and basically about transdisciplinary skills and transversal skills, what Finland is doing. So the transdisciplinary characteristics is really that we look into the world's wicked problems, multiple subjects, many teachers doing together. And this has been a challenge also in Finland in a way that because we have such a high autonomy of teachers um, in their own discipline and in their own classroom with their own students, that now we need to challenge that that parameter in a way that we need to have teachers collaborating more and more in the planning and in, in the execution and, and also in the assessment. Um, so all levels of collaboration. I would like to a little bit tell about this collaboration in a way that there's really many different levels. So for example, the different students' ages working together, so different teachers working together, uh, collaboration between school and home, the parents also can be even um, even as um, experts and and uh, part of the the learning community, and also uh, collaboration with the NGOs, with the museums, libraries, uh, firms, and and so forth. So it's really all levels of collaboration, and then the holistic ide ideology. And for example, United Nations, the Sustainable Development Goals can be can be taken like in Finland. In some of the schools, they have taken. The, the, the wicked problems or the themes for, from, from the SDGs. And then it has to be goal oriented that, that we're not just there hanging around and thinking what to do, but it has to be really goal oriented so that the teacher knows where we are going and assisting and scaffolding the students towards the goals. And whether they are subject content goals or then also transdisciplinary skill goals. And the skills then, you know, we all know most likely the, the OECDs, the four C's that came when we turned into the 21st century. That's uh, already 20 years ago. And now we need to really be, think about the, what are the really the, the skills that, that we need. So the holistic understanding of the world, critical thinking, of course. And this is also to do with um, with um, uh, with kind of too much information out there that uh, that we need to be able to categorize that information and to see that what is reliable and, and what is needed and so and the, and the skills also about recycling upcycling and and innovation that is really needed nowadays in our world and 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 if we think about our students what the world will be like for them in 2050 and 2060 and and so forth communication skills both online like over here and also offline and also the communication skills needs to be ethical as well that we need to, to teach the students how ethically also um, uh, to, to, to utilize all the kind of technology that, that, that we have. And, and now more and more also the social emotional skills and empathy is, is kind of rising to the, to the forefront of, of education. But still, um, students also need to learn autonomy and independence in their classroom so that, that they, they don't all the time rely on teacher, what is next, what do I do then, and so forth. But they need to have this kind of entrepreneurial skills. And that is something that we have also in the Finnish transversal skills um, set. And resilience, because of the change that we are going through, um, students needs, need to learn um, to handle the change and to handle kind of uncertainty and to be 
to be resilient. Here are the Finnish transversal skills. I know that you have gone through curriculum change now in, in uh, also in Hungary, for example, and in, in many other countries also more and more of this competence-based curriculum is coming into, into being. And this challenges the teacher, of course, also in a way that um, it's not anymore just the content of the subject, but the skills that needs to be incorporated into all of the subjects in, in all, of the, all of the lessons. And, you know, I will not go maybe to, to all of this, but uh, the, 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 the red one, thinking and learning to learn, is really, really one of the most important skills so that when the, when the students learn how to learn and, and where to get the information from and so forth and, and are thinking about it critically or so, that then, then they can, you know, after the school also learn more and more and uh, so we, we believe in, in lifelong learning. So we're not only teaching the students for, for, the, for the time being when they are at school, but also for the, for the rest of their life. And um, then maybe I would like to pinpoint also the kind of, for example, the blue, which is the multiliteracy skills. And in the multiliteracy skills, we are not only talking about reading, writing, um, speaking, communicating, and these kind of things, but also, again, it's engaged with the critical thinking in a way that we need to be able to, to, to see what is a misinformation. And, and for example, also we need to learn visual literacy, how to, how to analyze photographs or videos, moving images and so forth. So it's really um, packed with a lot of skills within that particular word. Um, then, like I said about the entrepreneurial skills, the lighter green, the resilience and also project based learning is, is in this kind of a skill category. The yellow one is really kind of a, at the core. I think it's coming, moving, moving uh, more and more into the core competence that it's a participation and, and citizens activism that we, we, we teach our, our young students how to be actively engaged how to uh, create a better world and, uh, and um, a better society. And this is also together with the building a sustainable future. And that's why we're teaching more and more about this upcycling or recycling or circular economy also, and, and, and bringing the climate change to the forefront of, of teaching. Then phenomenon-based learning is really a student-centered approach. Um, in Finland, we, in a way, don't teach teachers to teach, but also um, telling the teachers that they need to be facilitating the, the kind of the student-centered um, active learning. So the starting point has to be the student's own experiences. There's a spelling mistake there, but the, um, um, so experiences, because if we think about it, when the learner, a student comes to the learning moment um, where learning needs to happen, or, or that the teacher and the school has designed in a way, a kind of a learning experience, we can't think that the student doesn't have any prior experience of that particular theme that we are teaching about. So that we need to um, look into what does the student already know about it? And also in a way their own questions that what do I want to know? What do I need to know in order to, to um, take my learning to the next level? And that's why also the starting point is a lot of this observation about the student and the student's capabilities. Um, the teacher needs to provide time during in, in the lesson um, or in the learning experience. So there needs to be time for curiosity. Um, without curiosity, usually never a lot of um, uh, learning happens because if you are not a curious mind, then you are not also open to, to new things. Um, there needs to be time for sense making. How do I make sense of all of this? Um, then, so that means that there needs to be communication, maybe debate and, um, and so forth with, with among the students also. There needs to be time for innovation and um, thinking new 
about these things and also time for imagination um, maybe even kind of utopias and so forth um, I'm also a researcher at the University of Helsinki in a pedagogy of utopia or actually concrete utopia how to make that make those utopias concrete in in a, a uh, and, and, and this is kind of imagination is really, really important. And the joy of learning. I was asked to, to, to have a talk about how to, how to make it more engaging and, uh, and more fun. So, so the joy of learning needs to, be, needs to be there. And the teachers, therefore, needs to encourage the students for curiosity, interest towards the phenomena that are, are around the world, and so that the students make observations, they find information, they produce, co-create, and then also present and kind of maybe also uh, peer assess and give constructive feedback to, to other people, other students. And this is the way then, then, then strengthen the ability to categorize, to name, describe, and, and, and towards this critical thinking, well, like I said, the red in the transversal skill, skill, skills for us is, is, is very important. Then if we, if we think about the digital pedagogy, that that we have of course it's it's um has been there for a long time maybe maybe more kind of a, on the side um as an extracurricular thing and so forth but it's really come into the to the core of of education every time all the time we're using some kind of um, digital tool and this allows us to 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 set learning environments also very differently in a way that we can, we can through the digital tools, we are able to create uh, what what people learn. So in a way that what information they are they are getting, um, we are also able to design how they learn. Do they learn um, synchronously or asynchronously at the same time or at different times? Do they learn um, kind of um, through through um, contact to, to somewhere else or so forth. And where, where does this learning happen? And for example, in Finland, we use also mobile technology that, uh, that, um, that the students have maybe some kind of a um, route outside physical in, in a forest or in, in, in the city. And then also they have the mobi mobile access to the learning, to the learning material and, and sharing to each other. So, so it's really, uh, giving us a lot of opportunities and also when do they learn so do they learn for example during the COVID time when the schools closed down in, in Finland we are now open have been open since summer but um, so that uh, when did they learn during the uh, school closure was that some of them were learning at the same time uh, online with the student uh, teacher or they had tasks to do on their own time in their own pace and um, this is this is kind of um, really important to think about all these different aspects of technology. Um, but then at the bottom, I also have put that um, note that the relationship between an inspired teacher and a motivated student is also still essential. So the teacher has to be inspired, engaging, and and you know professional in being being a teacher, and then uh, the student of course need motivation so how do we motivate the, the 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 students to engage more and be active and of course for this engaging of and motivation of student there can be a lot of different um, um, possibilities of using poems movies um, arts art forms um, any kind of you know discussions or visits and and so forth so to make it more motivating so the Corona, I already a little bit said. There was a lot of challenges. I, I want to go really quickly about it. And, and um, one of them maybe I want to, to pinpoint is the learner loneliness, for example, that came out. That how to, how to engage the students and, and to make a learning, learning community. That is really, really important. Even if, we, if there was no co Corona, how to make a learning community in the classroom, in the school, where everybody is uh, supporting each other and of course this becomes even more challenging if we don't have the physical environment together um yeah like i i was told that i'm not supposed to go into this but so so um 
So co collaborative and play place learning is, is also maybe the challenging online. And, um, but, but I know that in Finland, there was a lot of this kind of play-based learning also happening during the closure. Um, of course, the, some, some concerns that came out was, for example, um, how the vulnerable uh, special education uh, st students, for example, how they struggle to work independently. And also, I think the, the screen time, and, and this is, again, not about school closure or corona time. Nowadays, the students more and more are on screen and use, using their mobile phones or playing, playing um, online with their, with their friends after school and so forth. So this is something that we need to balance and try to, to think about it, that how do we get the students also into the forests without technology or, or, uh, and so forth. But there was a lot of positive, positive opportunities, I think, that uh, came from this, um, <laughs> from this school closure. Um, there's a stronger connection, at least, to parents. Parents are more uh, interested, maybe, um, to know what is happening in, in school. And it was also a chance to develop more creative initiatives. Um, there was much, much more collaboration between teachers. I have been teaching teachers for many, many years in, in, in um, since the 1990s, actually, in, in Finland. And um, like I said, the phenomenon-based learning and this new curriculum has challenged teachers to, to work collaboratively. But I think this corona made it even more um, visual and more uh, um, actual in a way that they needed really to share information. How are you doing that? And how do we do this? And how does the timing go? When, when you stop and I start and, and, and so forth. So the collaboration, I can't kind of stress, stress enough. Um, and also kind of opportunity to try new tools. And also for you, now that you are, you are starting maybe um, trying new things, I think that you need to be um, open-minded and uh, to, to start small things. And it's okay also that if, if something um, doesn't work well. Um, I've talked a lot with, with um, for example, my, my husband who is, a, who is a doctor and uh, that um, I think in, in uh, medicine <laughs> there is more risks of making, making a mistake, for example, in the operation room or, or so forth. But as a teacher, there, there are not so, so, so crucial mistakes that if we, if we do take a kind of a new tool and test it and try it out with, with them, with the students. Um, it's, it's okay <laughs> um, if, if we make mistakes. So, so I think sometimes as teachers, we have a kind of a, uh, a dilemma that we need to be always perfect and always do exactly perfect. But then we need to be also a little bit uh, uh, more, um, adjusting to, to uncertainty and, and trying out and being playful at the same time. So like I said, technology can build the communities of learners um, and also it can enrich the teaching resources and, and, and practices and it, it can enhance our professional growth. And for example, for myself, when, when I was still teaching, um, there was a lot of things that I didn't know how to do. For example, I don't still know really how to build a Minecraft and my environment, for example. But I did give that opportunity for the students to, 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 to show their skills and, and to present the, the information that they were doing in a, in a different ways. For example, when I was, I was a history teacher, ethics teacher, history teacher, civics. So for example, in history, when they were learning about industrial, a revolution, they, they, the presentations were so varied. Some of them, they did Minecraft, PowerPoints, uh, animations, um, then, or then they created something uh, te technical themselves and so forth. So, so as, a, as a teacher, I need to give them the opportunity to, to, to use their own skills. And at the same time, I am also learning from my own students. And this is the kind of uh, uh, recipe um, pro kind of reciprocity of in them um, in the learning that the teacher also can learn and develop. And um, 
Yeah, I think this connecting across borders is really uh, interesting. We have had also before the COVID, we had uh, um, students and classrooms Zooming or Skyping at that time, for example, to, to Africa or to California and so forth. So, um, so I think that is something that you could think about that if you have, you know, if there used to be pen pals that, 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 that students were writing letters, but now we can also directly to take the Zoom uh, to, to across the continents. So maybe some guidelines to the end in a way that there needs to be some routines when, where and what there needs to be collaboration on, on all different levels. There needs to be an understanding that what is the difference between the, giving the, the students a list of tasks or actually engaging them into active learning like that one slide was about curiosity and, and so forth. So there needs to be much, much more flexibility, I think. And this has to be also if there are any school directors out there listening that, that also the director needs to make this are they possible for the teachers to have more flexibility in, in, the, in the scheduling and so forth? So be more creative and, and have fun with it. And this formative assessment, I think, is more about the skills, where maybe the summative assessment is, is usually more about the content. And um, Finland being the, fir uh, the number one in, in future skills, we really utilize a lot of formative assessment. Here are some pictures from last spring. This was one, one um, uh, was it first or second graders students in in um, in Zoom or in in a meeting. So you can see that the students, all of them, they brought their own uh, own toys and they told stories to each other from from these from these toys. And this is you know making it creative and fun for the little students. This was also, you can see, kind of a game, gamified um, um, learning environment. And this was also, I mean, you can see this is just toys, but for little children to, to make a kind of a um, story and so forth, it, it creates their own imagination and creativity, and, and also um, they learn to tell a lot of the different. Um, they, 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 they learn to make the story, which is also uh, enhancing their, their critical thinking. This is a little bit upper school. They, they were painting these chairs. And this is um, about the phenomenon-based learning, for example, that usually there is always the questions of the students first. And it can be also online with the post-it notes or at school with, with physical post-it notes. And this was about, uh, about plants and so forth. And then they did actual planting and also art, kind of nature art. So a lot of different kind of um, category, categorizing and also making notes and diaries and, and so forth. So I thank you and you can, you can contact me if you want more, but, uh, but it's very little. I, I, I've been just asked to go to a school again here in Helsinki to, to, um, to have a workshop with the, with, the, with the teachers, which are really on the forefront of phenomenon-based learning. But I go with them every year, and I've been doing that already for, for four years or so. And so it's not like a quick fix at all, but it's, it's a really long process to, to have this kind of pedagogical transformation happen. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ilana. This is really inspiring. And uh, as uh, I understood, the phenomenon-based learning is pretty complex and requires a lot of uh, collaboration between the stakeholders. And uh, I'm also sure that during our QA session, we will, um, we will get back to this topic. And I encourage all the participants to send us their questions uh, in the chat box so we can go through uh, to all the questions in the, during the Q&A session. And actually, I really like your examples, how you, how, uh, you link uh, Minecraft and uh, history lessons. I really like that. Yeah. So thank you again. So let's welcome Christy Saloum. She's from Estonia. And uh, to just give a, a little context, I was very impressed when I heard the news uh, in 2012 that Estonia was uh, 
the first, the very first country actually uh, where coding became mandatory in primary school. And uh, in 2012, they launched the nationwide program to teach uh, school kids uh, from age uh, from seven until 19 how to write code in in school. And I think it it was really amazing. Uh, and it still it is, uh, and um, and it's just so great that uh, Estonia is a small country with a population of 1.3 million people, and um, and punch above its own weight when it comes to technology and uh, computer science. And uh, I know that there is a non-profit called Pro Tiger. And its program is aimed at preschool, primary, and vocational education in effort to integrate technology, educational resources, and training opportunities into schools. And uh, financially supports uh, also schools and kindergartens and acquire um, and helps them acquiring different um, tools as well. And Christina is a program manager at uh, Pro Tiger and the Education and Youth Authorities. And in this seminar, she will give um, an overview about uh, teaching uh, robotics and computer science in Estonia, focusing how to engage uh, the students and uh, how to create uh, um, really cool lessons and how to actually prepare them to the labor market later on. So Christina, welcome in this seminar today. Yeah, hello for everybody. And I will share my presentation and let's uh, start then. Yeah. Can you see? Yes. Okay, that's great. Let's start then. Yes, uh, I am Christy Salom and I work in uh, Innovation and Cooperation Centre in Education and Youth Authority of Estonia as a Program Tiger Program Manager. But before that, I was 20 years a teacher in a, in a primary school and also I uh, was a trader of other teachers and also I made different materials for students and teachers also. So, and um, uh, also was a leader of uh, robotics and informatics and programming clubs. So different things, but I can say so it, that education and technology uh, both are really important in my life. And right now I work in, uh, in uh, Harno, in uh, Education and Youth Authority of Estonia and help other teachers, other schools, other kindergartens to start with technology. And right now we can say that technology is everywhere. There is no field you can manage without ICT, without technology. So it's important uh, to start really early. It's uh, important to give our students skills for the future. And uh, I, um, I know that uh, robotics and programming and such things are really uh, great to start. Uh, to uh, develop those skills like problem solving, like cooperation and collaboration, uh, critical thinking, and also really important is creativity. And uh, when kids, uh, they uh, build something, they create together something, they learn much more than uh, only programming or robotics. And this is exciting for kids. So uh, they love learning process and uh, they are not the only users. It's important to be a smart user, but much more important is uh, to be a creator, to create something new for uh, all of us. So kids are our future. So uh, we have to start uh, developing their skills already in kindergarten. And I uh, love the uh, thought of Steve Jobs that everybody should uh, uh, learn programming because it, uh, good and it helped us learn to think 
not only that not uh, only programming is important but uh, important is uh, how we think and it's a good start for everybody and uh, i can say that ict at the estonian schools is um uh, there is no curricula for coding so uh, our schools uh, also are really autonomous they don't have to teach coding actually they don't have to teach robotics or multimedia uh, but we have uh, digital competencies integrated into curricula and um, also transversal topic technology and innovation is through all subjects so every teacher should do something with digital uh, in digital field uh, should develop digital competencies should develop technological uh, how to uh, manage with technolo technology and uh, as Silvio already said that in Estonia 2012 started a program Proga Tiger program and everybody said that it's um, it's um, uh, one really uh, great thing that every student already in the first grade will start with programming actually that wasn't true <laughs> Uh, there was a plan to start with some of schools and with uh, some of teachers with small steps but uh, when everybody already uh, told that then uh, the small plan uh, grows <laughs> and uh, it became a much more bigger plan and right now we can uh, actually say that um, many of our schools and kindergartens are already involved with uh, activities and um, we work actually all over the Estonia and our goals in Proga Tiger program are to enhance technological literacy and digital competence of learners and teachers and um, as in our program actually are only two people uh, really important for us is network of teachers of those teachers who already are really enthusiastic and uh, love to work with technology and uh, ICT and uh, know how important that is and uh, know how to do it with their students so they will help other teachers to start and um, also we have a mentor teachers who work with other teachers and uh, schools and kindergartens and help them uh, to make their own plan because our schools they can choose how and what they uh, teach uh, important is what kind of outcomes they will have when they uh, ended our sc their schools and uh, of course very important is uh, that uh, our kids will learn different uh, skills and they have an interest uh, for uh, technology and stem and steam and they know what is algorithmic thinking they uh, know how to solve different problems problems and uh, how to programming and our target groups uh, are preschool general education and vocational education so it's a really wide uh, target group and uh, here are our focus areas uh, there are three focus areas engineering sciences as informatics behatronics and electronics design and technology as 3d printing drawing graphics multimedia digital media animations and such things and also ict as a computer science and digital communications how to be a great citizen in a web what to do with computers how to be a, a great um, citizen in uh, internet too not only in real life and uh, why we have those focus areas it's important to understand how technology works so that's the first thing then it's important to uh, think critically and understand all those information that, uh, around us and how to solve different problems and uh, how to think and also be a good uh, designer to be a good creator then you uh, need some kind of um, skills and uh, right now we can say that uh, we started 2012 but right now in 2012 uh, most of our schools and uh, a huge number of kindergartens are involved with uh, our program uh, not every school and every kindergarten is really active 
and uh, do systematic work with ICT and the robotics and programming. But many of those are really enthusiastic. They have a great big plan. They have uh, ICT um, uh, in every subject. They uh, uh, work uh, also uh, with elective courses and with different courses for students so they can develop their ICT skills. And, uh, but many of schools still need support. They uh, maybe don't know actually uh, what they have to do that every student have to be possibility to start with ICT uh, in a young age already. Uh, so what do we are doing? Uh, we make learning materials with teachers, with uh, universities for uh, every teacher. And um, they, all those materials are free to use for everybody. And uh, they can just uh, pick up what they need, what uh, they're interested in, and then uh, start with the students. Also, we uh, work with uh, different groups um, to develop curriculum and uh, we have a different teacher trainings uh, for different levels of teachers for uh, those who are still who are starting and for those who already have uh, many experiences. Uh, as I said before, network uh, is really important. We have Project Tiger mentors who help schools and kindergartens to start their, their uh, own plan and also we're supporting with the purchase of technological equipment uh, every year we have uh, in the spring uh, um, the possibility schools and kindergartens uh, to make their own plan and to tell us what they need and then uh, support, we support them uh, with the money they can buy different things they need to start with ICT. Uh, here are uh, some of our materials uh, we have a huge collection of materials where are different instructions, learning scenarios, lesson plans uh, about uh, programming, about robotics, about different um, um, software. So they can uh, choose what they already have, what they uh, need to teach and find uh, different materials that other teachers already have done, have already um, tried if it works or not. So it's a great place to find uh, help when you don't know exactly what, where to start and uh, what to do. And also we made digital books uh, for different levels of schools. So uh, there are um, uh, 35 lesson plans for uh, teachers and uh, lesson materials for students in uh, every part for a young students digital art and for older uh, digital media, then coding and robotics for uh, different age levels and also digital safety. So the, this is systematic material and everybody can just uh, start from the beginning and go to the end with those materials or just um, uh, pick up some of those materials and use it uh, during other subjects or use those materials uh, maybe after school activity, uh, uh, during after school activities. So uh, our schools and the kindergartens, they are free to use how they want to use all those materials that we made. And uh, I'm really proud about informatic courses for high school because last year um, uh, 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 with the universities, we made uh, different elective courses for high school. And uh, there is uh, six courses and uh, also development projects for students. And uh, different students will uh, choose different courses, programming, software developing, uh, software analysis, testing, user-centered design or digital services or cybersecurity also. So they can choose different courses and then they uh, will put together a group and make a development project that really will help uh, their school, their uh, um, go, uh, the place they live or uh, something else. If they have a real problem, then uh, they uh, find a solution and work together. And every student will have a um, different role in this group. Some uh, of them will be a project manager, there will be a programmer, there will be a designer, and they work together and they uh, find the solution for the, this problem. And it's, I think it's really important to uh, 
start already in a high school with those things because they then they understand diversity of ICT sector. It's not only programming, it's not only data. There's a different things in ICT sector and uh, they can develop their skills according to their interest and uh, better, better choices for the future. So they can choose what kind of uh, career they want to have and where they will go to learn after high school. And if uh, they have possibility to start early, then maybe they will do some things that uh, I uh, put here. This S cube is uh, uh, made has made from our students and it, um, uh, gathering data from university. And uh, I think it's really proud to be. <laughs> to be there and, uh, and um, to help everybody with that. Also here are um, self-driving buses in Thailand. So also the students worked with this project and uh, they piloting those buses in, uh, uh, in the city. And uh, delivery boys and girls, those are robots that uh, bring us food and different things and help uh, with that. So if our students start early with ICT, then they uh, maybe will be something else really great and uh, to make our future better. And uh, here are some slides about popularizing activities. Uh, actually, we support mostly schools and kindergartens with different things, but uh, also we have um, competitions and events for students. And uh, already this year, already third time, we have a um, competition event, Proga Tiger Future Maker. And last year we had uh, 15,000 participants from different age levels, from kindergartens, from schools. And uh, they have a possibility uh, to make something great in their own kindergarten or school. So we make different tasks for them for different uh, age levels, for different devices, for different uh, um, interests. And they can choose from those uh, tasks or they can do something by themselves what's interesting uh, in. And this is a part of European Code Week. And this year we are really proud. We are in the second place in Europe. And uh, that's great because uh, there are many different events that the stu students will be participated. And uh, our event still lasts until uh, the end uh, of November. And so uh, the kids work together. And unfortunately, last year we have uh, different uh, events when the students came together and make something great together. They build something, they have uh, workshops, they have uh, different uh, competitions, but this year, because of Corona, we cannot uh, go all together and make something great together. Uh, most of our activities are in, to, uh, through the web, so they can work together, but not in the same place. So they are doing different great things, like here. We have a Facebook group, and there are different things that our kids are doing. Uh, and uh, here are some examples. Uh, kids are uh, learning programming uh, outside and inside. They are learning uh, programming with different robots. They are doing something with the drones. So different activities, many, many different activities. And they will share and everybody can uh, pick up some ideas from uh, those uh, groups and uh, maybe do something else interesting uh, with their uh, kids. And um, I am a teacher and I love when uh, everybody will do something practical. And I, uh, I think maybe it will be good to make one uh, task that we have in, uh, in our uh, event. And maybe that will be interesting what we are doing. And uh, there uh, don't have to be a robot, there don't have to be devices to start with programming. Actually, it's easy to start without nothing. And uh, I have actually here uh, four pieces of papers with different colors. And um, I hope everybody will be ready <laughs> in their own and uh, will um, 
make some exercises with me. Uh, in the programming, it's really important. If uh, I will say as a programmer something for the, to the computer, then something will happen. I will be a programmer and I will say that uh, if I will show you yellow paper, you have to clap your hands twice. So yellow paper, twice, clap your hands. Then I have a blue paper, then you have to stretch yourself a little bit because we have sitting here a long time already. When I show you red, then you have to shake your hands. Red, shake your hands. And if I will uh, uh, choose green one, then you have to say Tere, uh, that is hello in Estonian. Tere. Green one, Tere. Yellow one was clap your hands and stretch yourself because it's blue. And uh, red one, shake your hands. Such, such exercise that uh, it's great to, to start with programming also. And I hope you uh, made some exercises in your home too. Uh, here are some examples more, but I uh, see that our time uh, is almost uh, over. So uh, I hope the presentation uh, will be shared with everybody so they can uh, just see those. But uh, here are some examples from our event too that uh, our students will do. And uh, they help to start the learning to think. And also dancing is coding. That uh, example is here too. You can just uh, look at uh, that later. And I, I know that um, if we want that uh, we make some kind of change in our world, then uh, we have to start with our kids and inspire them, as uh, Ilona said before. And I think uh, when earlier, the better, because that's why I'm really happy that in Estonia already in kindergarten, kids are really interested in robotics and programming and starting already when they are two or three years old with programming and ICT. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Christy. That was uh, really interesting and uh, I'm really happy that you shared a couple of examples with us. Uh, mm, we would like to start the Q&A session, so I encourage everyone to send their questions uh, in the chat box. But uh, I already have two questions uh, to both of um, you. So Ilona, you said the, the, um, that one of the most things is uh, regarding the phenomenon based uh, learning is um, is that uh, you don't teach teachers to teach rather being a facilitator and uh, uh, learning to learn and critical thinking is um, is really important and uh, my question would be that how would you recommend to start the phenomenon based learning model uh, launching in the school uh, if I'm I am an interested teacher shall I focus on my own uh, lessons or or first uh, or as a first step I should contact uh, my colleagues the teachers and we should figure out something together so how, what what would be your recommendation Yeah, I think uh, similar questions I've had before <laughs> also. I try to be short because we don't have much time. Um, yeah, I think about this teaching to teach or learning, learning to learn <laughs> is it, kind of, um, as teachers, we also need to be curious and we also need to be learning. And I think when we are curious and open to learn uh, as teachers, um, then we are also modeling this learning for for the for the students in a way that the teacher can also say i don't know you know let's find out where could we find out more information and so forth and this is i think uh, what is challenging in the phenomenon based learning when when we have so so wide 
um, com complex um, kind of phenomena that we really don't, we, we, how could we, you know, I also Krista would say that there's problems that needs to be solved. And, and this, is, this is where the teacher on its own or, or her own or he, he's by himself um, won't be able to in a way also. So that's why we need to engage other, other teachers, other experts, other disciplines, other kind of angles. And um, so it challenges that kind of autonomy. And I think um, a thing that me as a teacher, I just do on my own and I know everything. Yeah. Because I don't, we don't. I'm not a perfect person and I don't think anybody in, in that way can be. So, so that is kind of where the teaching teachers to be facilitators and also because they, what they need to know, um, they need to be 100% professionals about the, the, the kind of the, the curriculum so what I to do with a lot of teachers all the time in Finland, we go go through the curriculum, 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 because phenomenon based learning can't be also something kind of extra, because that's when the teacher says, oh, I don't have time for that because that's extra. It, because it is going through the curriculum, we have a really excellent curriculum content wise, but then seeing which subjects and which teachers can work together. Mm -hmm. Now, when the question is, how can I start it in school and can I do it alone? Um, in a way, no, you can't do it alone because it's a collaborative effort. But yes, you can start with little steps on your own. And so if you are interested, I think one of the starting points and that I, I had also earlier on one of my slides was the student's own curiosity and, and uh, previous knowledge. So when you start teaching about the phenomena, you need to, if you just start with that, that what do they know already about the phenomena without any prior, prior like teaching or whatever. You can have um, the students make mind maps, for example. This is what I know already. So as a history teacher, I would start that, uh, for example, Second World War. I can't think that the, the students who come to the eighth grade when, when curriculum wise, they should be learning about the Second World War, that they've never heard it before. They've heard, they know, they have experiences maybe from in, in their families and so forth. So, so all this knowledge is gathered already in the beginning. And then we think about it like, what do I as a student want to know? What, what maybe should I know and so forth. And then the questions can be anonymous also. They don't have to be described so that, so that then they can be categorized, which are similar questions and so forth. And I think the most difficult thing is for, for students to ta start making their own questions. Too often, it is the teacher who poses the question and the student's job is only to answer. Um, or then the exercise book has the question and then you only search for the answer to that particular question. But when you teach your own students to make the questions, as a starting point for the learning. That is when there is more engagement, more motivation and so forth. So that's where, where you can start <clears throat> just, you know, on your own. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we got three other questions. Um, two of them are for Christy and uh, it's already in the chat box. Christy, have you faced uh, opposition from schools or teachers when implementing technology into the curriculum? If so, how do you get them on board? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> uh, as I said, we have some of schools that are doing already really great uh, job. And uh, I think it, it's important to share those experiences already uh, uh, those schools have with others. And also uh, we have a mentor teachers and they are local mentors. So they work with the teachers and the schools uh, in their, this local area. So they uh, put together those teachers who are already doing something great, those schools with uh, those teachers who are not doing anything or don't uh, like to do it or think that it's something I don't want to because it's, I'm afraid a little bit. So um, those mentor teachers, they uh, have to show that uh, that's nothing to afraid. They are doing some uh, kind of uh, small workshops for those teachers who are not so much interested in ICT. And uh, when they are actually seeing that's nothing uh, to afraid and it's not so hard that uh, I can actually manage with the 
uh, ICT, I can actually manage with those robots. And actually it is fun. And I know my kids will love that. So uh, I will try it. And it's important to start not only with one teacher, but there should be a, a two, three, five teachers when they work together, then they will support uh, each other too. And then mm -hmm. it's much more easier to start. And also we have a program for those schools who are not uh, so uh, comfortable with ICT. So uh, they can work together as a team and they can start together. They have different courses, they have different things to do. And they, then it's much more easy to start uh, because they work together and it's easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. I think one of the takeaways to is the collaboration between the stakeholders, between teachers, between teacher parents, between teacher students. And Absolutely, the network is really important there. Yeah, I think in both in Finland and in Estonia. So yeah, I, I found a lot of kind of similarities, I think. Yeah. We, were yeah. talking about, we were talking about critical thinking, collaboration, um, how to solve problems and creativity and, and these kind of things. So they're very, very similar. Yeah. Yeah. And our schools are really autonomous. They can choose how they are doing something. We, we, we will not say them. They all have to do the same way. Yeah, and I think uh, for a couple of teachers, that can be a little bit scary that it's not written, that you mm. said that there is no coding curriculum that is uh, coming from the, the state, that all teacher has this freedom to figure out what to, what to teach. And but, uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, if there are materials and you can choose from those materials mm -hmm. and you can easy start because you have this support, then you have possibility to choose, but you can choose your own way. Mm -hmm. Not every, everybody should do it the same way because we have different schools. Some of them are really small, some of them are really huge, some of them are with uh, some uh, uh, kind of uh, interests and others with other kind of interests. So, yes. And, and if I may say, because somebody also asked on the chat if there is a phenomenon based curri curriculum, it's yes. the same curriculum that we have and it's, it is kind of subject divided. But, mm -hmm. but the thing is that what, 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 it, what we do is kind of mining of that, of, that, of that curriculum and then seeing which themes and which subjects go together and which teachers should collaborate. Sometimes the collaboration, when, when we started the new curriculum in 2016, it came more like um, um, on a personal level that a teacher would say, oh, I like to work with you, you know, because, and it came maybe from that side, but it should come from the curriculum that which subjects really go together in this particular phenomena and, 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 um, and in that way, yeah. yeah. Maybe there's another question that I can take, was this parents, that how do the parents um, react uh, do they need to be edu educated? And I think, you know, of course we have uh, parents who embrace the, the new approaches and the parents who don't and who are very critical. And in one particular school where the whole school was flipped because it was, it was, a, um, it was a new building and a new school, so, so it, we were able to be very creative with the, with the whole. And it, it was very different than, than, than normal. There was every day um, there is, or still is every day one and a half hours of phenomenon based learning uh, kind of uh, themes and projects and then they go to different maybe skill based um, subjects and so and, and that's throughout the year they do five different phenomena through, throughout the year and there's always at the end there's a kind of an open open house for, for parents to come in mm -hmm. and in the beginning the parents were like what is happening and, and how do I know what they're doing and that are they actually learning the subjects, you know, the content, and and uh, there is no tests. How how do I know? And but then the education, I think, for the parents, <laughs> when you were talking about the educating the parents, was that there was um, there was in the evenings these pedagogical cafes, kind of discussions for parents to come in, and some of the teachers or experts who then were were telling what is happening and and, and what is the goal of the whole kind of mission and the schooling and education. Why do we do this kind of way? And, and then more and more they, they came on board, I think, when they were seeing in the open houses five times a year that, that um, 
that okay they are really learning and they are really doing a lot of lot of things so and mm -hmm. and we use this portfolio pedagogy and formative assessment where you can all the time be seeing what is happening and, and how the how the students are progressing mm -hmm. during uh, during this uh, uh, students event we also have different workshops for uh, parents so the kids can teach to parents what they already know what they already can do they will uh, w make something great together with robots and uh, i think it's inspiring uh, parents too when they are uh, actually seeing what uh, the kids are doing and what they are learning and i think after this uh, spring <laughs> every parent uh, understand um, better that uh, ict is really important and uh, mm -hmm. cannot manage without uh, ict because it um, makes something uh, Mm, happen when uh, we are all are in their own houses and we cannot be together and learn together then uh, this it is our uh, saver <laughs> mm. I, I may one more example give from one school mm -hmm. who did it already in 2016 and now you know other schools have been encouraging them to do it and also that because in phenomenon based learning we need to engage also other experts and so forth so they did a kind of a questionnaire to all of the hundreds and hundreds of parents that what is your expertise? Uh, would you like to share it with, with, uh, with the students and, and, and the school? And it doesn't have to be their occupation. It can be their other interest or hobby that, for example, they know about the birds or the, the, the mushrooms in the, in the forest or, or, or they have a kind of, um, they're very handy with their, with their hands. Um, but but so this is the way when they did this kind of a database then then they know that okay now we have this phenomena let's contact those parents are you able to to join us mm -hmm. and so and, and it has been very very fruitful so yeah. i think there are ways of how to engage parents more and more and they're willing to to do it and actually we don't have enough uh, informatic teachers we don't have uh, enough teachers who can uh, teach robotics so uh, in many schools actually parents are the solution because uh, they can do that so they can actually teach students make something together great and uh, yeah, will be more part of school life that way oh that's great to hear because the gap between school and companies seems to decrease in this way if parents are coming into the, into the yeah, absolutely yeah, and the last question is to you, uh, Christy, that um, we just said that from 2012, Estonia is focusing on coding in, in schools. And do you, have, do you have any records that show that uh, children are more um, interested in becoming programmers or having uh, work with, uh, or working with robotics mm -hmm. since the... Uh, Actually, we know that uh, those who will uh, choose informatics uh, for in the university, there, there is uh, those uh, numbers are actually grown. Mm -hmm. so, uh, we can say that something already changed. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, um, we uh, University of Tallinn made a um, um, survey that uh, where it was together uh, ICT and uh, mathematics. Mm -hmm. and uh, they wanted to know if uh, uh, the kids will be um, uh, will uh, more understand mathematics when they are working uh, with robots and making uh, math uh, skills uh, during this uh, more understandable uh, there was some kind of connection but uh, the time is uh, still too small to uh, say that uh, actually it's a, a huge, uh, huge uh, improvement. Or, uh, <laughs> yes, improvement. But I think uh, uh, the number of startups uh, is pretty. Yeah, high. let's hope that uh, that's uh, something for this direction. <laughs> yes. I know that uh, kids actually, they love to uh, learn with, uh, with technology.
So it's important to involve them with technology. And I uh, see that uh, there's a different subjects you can uh, put together with technology, with different technology and also with robotics. And they will, um, uh, some of skills will be much more visible than, uh, than just learn. When they are doing actually something, put together something or uh, make some kind of robots and then they will um, much more uh, uh, understand mathematics and physics and such things better. Mm -hmm. And can you recommend any uh, digital tools uh, when you work with um, kindergartens? What kind of uh, With young students, uh, I can say uh, uh, robots are the best way because uh, mm -hmm. uh, we don't want that our kids will uh, sitting uh, in front of the screen and, uh, all the time. Well, but when they are programming with small robots, with B-bots, with m tinies or um, Quobos, mm -hmm. <laughs> then they actually see what happens when they are doing something. And, uh, and it's a great possibility to put together robotics and uh, different subjects they are actually learning in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. so they are uh, making uh, free things together. Learn something, uh, other thing, they uh, make something with robots, understand uh, how to think uh, coding and also uh, they're playing. Actually, they're just playing and they don't understand they are learning the, the same time. That's great. Uh, thank you so much. And thank you all the questions, but we are running out of time. And uh, uh, as far as I know, we will share the presentation with the participants. And uh, and and we will we will continue. So we are in. Let's be in touch and share. How we will continue. And Christy and uh, Ilona, thank you for uh, the great speeches. I really enjoyed and hope all the attendees. And um, and thank you for sharing us your uh, experiences and knowledge in this field. Thank you. It was very, really nice to, to participate and also learn from our, our um, colleague in, in Estonia. So thank you, Christy, also. Absolutely. The same here. Thank you for everybody. And Ilona, I got many ideas from your presentation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, bye-bye. 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 Have a nice day.